Ken Whiting with Paddle TV on a fine spring day, getting ready to paddle and giving you a little bit of a tip as I think about how nasty it would be to flip in this cold, cold water we have right now. The reality is that flipping a kayak is one of the biggest concerns that new paddlers have. And in many cases, it stops people from ever trying kayaking. And that's a huge shame because with some simple strategies and some techniques, you can dramatically reduce the chances of flipping. And of course, that's what we're going to talk about today. The first way to avoid flipping is to get a kayak that's designed not to flip. Now, recreational kayaks are designed to be the most stable kayaks. And so rec kayaks are typically designed to be between 28 inches to 40 inches wide. That width, although it does provide stability, it comes at a cost. No, not a financial cost, but a cost in performance. The wider a kayak is, the less, the more water it's pushing, the less performance it has, the less, less speed that kayak has. If you want to avoid flipping at all costs, there are kayaks that do an incredible job of it. But if you're not willing to give up some paddling performance for stability, then you can't just rely on the boat. You actually need to employ some actual techniques to prevent yourself from flipping. And the narrower your kayak becomes, the more you're gonna rely on technique to prevent yourself from flipping. And so that's what we're gonna look at next. We're gonna look at the techniques you need to employ to prevent yourself from flipping. In order to do that, I gotta get off my truck and into the water. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, the first techniques we're gonna talk about to avoid flipping your kayak is all about not losing your balance to begin with. Before we get right into it though, I gotta take a quick second here to thank this uh, video sponsor, PNH Sea Kayaks. Now, PNH Sea Kayaks makes high quality touring kayaks. In fact, I've tested two of their sea kayaks over the past year and I love them both. The 14 foot touring kayak, the Virgo, was actually a kayak of the year uh, award winner last year. And this year, I just got off testing this sucker right here, the Leo, which is a 16 foot touring kayak. I had it on an overnight uh, kayak camping trip down on the New River in Newark, North Carolina. And at the risk of spoiling the surprise, it was a really fun boat. I'm gonna leave links in the description box down below to the, uh, to the full unbiased reviews of these kayaks. Now, the first technique to, to maintain your balance in a kayak is to always keep your head centered over the kayak. It's really that simple. And that applies to when you're sitting flat or when the boat's up on edge. Because as soon as I let my head fall to one side, whoo, well, you can see what's gonna happen. And you're all, you can easily lose your shades too, which would be tragic. That was a good reminder. Dumbkin, dum dum dumbkin. Now, <laughs> the second technique for not losing your balance or your sunglasses is to stay loose in the hips and really allow your lower body and your upper body to work independently but cooperatively with each other. Now, starting paddlers who are, tend to be a bit more nervous, they tend to be all stiff. And so when they get hit by wave or wind, their whole body gets and head gets shifted to one side or the other off center. If you stay loose in the hips, when maybe you even drift into a rock, you hit that rock or that wave hits you, that's okay, your head stays center over the kayak. Not only does loose hips really let your kayak go with the flow and absorb the, the different things that are gonna happen to it, while you keep your head centered, but it's a, key, uh, it's a key technique to learn for more advanced paddling techniques, which you know, can involve paddling with your kayak on edge. This is how 
you can deal with rough water, with current, and even control your boat in windy conditions. So not only is it a great technique to learn to maintain your balance, but it's a great technique to learn to help accelerate your paddling. Now, no matter how good you get, if you take a high performance, a narrow kayak into rough conditions, uh, more aggressive paddling conditions, then inevitably you're going to lose your balance. And so the next te technique we're going to talk about involves recovering your balance. And to do that, you use braces. Now, brace simply involves, as soon as I lose my balance, my head falls to one side and I start tipping, I stop my flipping momentum by slapping the water with my paddle. Once I do that, that momentary support I get from the paddle allows me to roll the kayak upright again and then bring my body over top. Now in order to do this, before we get into specifics, it's important to, to identify that this bracing technique really works much better when you're in a kayak that has hip support and thigh hooks. When you have a boat that's fit around you like this, you're wearing a pair of trail shoes, trail runners, whereas in rec kayaks where you don't have thigh hooks, don't have hip support, you're almost in rubber boots, oversized rubber boots. You just don't have the same control. And so it's not that it doesn't apply to those boats. It's just it, you can do a lot more with the kayak that has thigh hooks and hip sports. Now there are really two types of braces that you can use. There's a low brace and a high brace. And the big difference between the two is the position of your paddle relative to your elbows. A low brace, the paddle is lower than your elbows. For a high brace, the paddle is higher than your elbows. Now, whichever you use, this is how it works. If you start to flip, you reach out at 90 degrees and slap the water with your paddle. Now, the natural thing to do is to try to push your head and body back over top the kayak, but your paddle just is not gonna provide enough support to do that, and so you're just gonna keep flipping. What you have to do instead is you have to level off the boat first and the only way to do that is by pulling up with the bottom knee, the knee that's going underwater. Once your boat is level, you can then swing your head and body back over top the kayak. This is where thigh hooks and hip pads come in really handy. To make sure your head drops towards the water, a good trick is to watch your brace because it's hard to lift your head when you're looking down. Now, we could go into a lot more depth about the low brace and high brace and even the sculling brace, which I haven't shown you yet, but the reality is that these, they're fairly advanced techniques. Uh, and, what, but what is important is that you understand that you can use your paddle blade to stop your flipping momentum. And that doesn't just work in a high performance touring kayak with thigh hooks and knee pad, uh, and hip pads, that can work in any type of kayak. Is if you start to feel like you're losing your balance, use your paddle blade to stop that boat from flipping over, get your head down low and pull up on the knee if you have thigh hooks, or just get your body weight low to try to level off the kayak as much as you can and you can prevent yourself from flipping in any type of kayak. Bracing is one of those things that's hard to practice. Like how you really have to catch yourself flipping unexpectedly to really practice it. And I'll tell you a story about how I learned to brace. Uh, I learned a whitewater kayak. That was the first type of kayaking that I learned. I learned to roll first. And when I was on the river and I would start to flip, I would just set up for my roll and go with it and roll because I loved rolling. Rolling was cool. I didn't care about braces. <laughs> it wasn't until I rolled probably about 50 times in the white water that I was like, God, I'm sick of going underwater in white water, getting water up my nose and in my eyeballs and rolling isn't as cool as it used to be. And I remember the day that I started to roll and I started to flip and I went to set up for a roll and I was like, no, I don't want to flip here. And I braced and this light bulb just went on in my mind and I realized, wow, okay, braces are your first line of defense. The roll is the second line of defense. But 
the brace, my braces were very strong because I learned to roll. And so if you're going to do a type of kayaking, sea kayaking, whitewater kayaking, uh, touring in rougher conditions where flipping is a real possibility, then one of the best ways, the best way to develop your braces, strong braces, is to learn the kayak roll. And with that, not only will you have stronger braces, but you'll also improve your confidence will soar to new heights knowing that you have this backup plan. If you flip, you can roll back back upright and you don't have to rely on some type of on-water rescue technique. Getting cold, it's exhausting. There's a lot of challenges with getting back into the boat from the water. Don't say to yourself, don't get frustrated with how do I practice braces or how do I teach myself to do that? Well, you know what? Just knowing right now that you can use your paddle blade to stop your flipping momentum, that's key, and that you're not relying on that paddle to push your head and body upright. That you actually have to, as you slap the water, drop your head and level off your boat. That knowledge will go a long way towards that, that happening organically, naturally for you on the water. Ultimately though, it's time on the water that develops these types of skills. And that's such a great excuse to go paddling more, as if you needed, needed another excuse. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I'm Ken Whiting, this is Paddle TV. We got lots more paddling tips, gear reviews, paddling adventures coming your way. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and I'll see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.